my God. We are back with another edition of Grindhouse Chic starring Robert Schneider. And as always, I am Robert Schneider, and I am joined by my ever-present co-host, Matthew Armstrong. Um, Brian Baldwin is once again on special assignment. I think he's still re- I think he's still recovering from from, from sex from his, night from his birthday sex yeah 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 <laughs> yeah I heard he threw out his back <laughs> but that would give him plenty of time to watch a ton of movies yeah um speaking of which um as we're recording this we are less than a week from the Black Friday sale but. I have to tell you, I think I got more movies in this in the mail this week than I have in a long time. Really? Yeah, I got an uh my my order from Terror Vision with the Le- Linnea Quigley horror workout video, which I watched, and the other film about the gun, mm-hmm. which I have not watched. And aren't you wearing your spider ring? Which spider ring? You didn't get a spider ring with your movies? I did not. Um, I'm not a subscriber. Oh, you, you usually just still get it. They throw in like little surprises every time. Well, I got some. Surpri- I got some surprises for. Uh, oh, okay. Who? Some something about who children don't play with dead things, like some stuff from that. Mm. But we got to tell you, um, their next month of releases does not look good to me. <laughs> did they? Oh, the four they announced. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know anything about those. I saw some people excited about one of them, but I didn't hear much buzz about the other three. I've seen the American version of Cube. Do not like it. Do not. I not. I do not need to see the Japanese version, <laughs> which I'm sure is better. Um, the only one that kind of interests me is the one from the '80s, shot on video from the same person who did uh, Video Violence. So mm-hmm. I might pick that one up at a later date. I don't that think captives any captives one. Yeah, I don't think any of these are going to sell out. Yeah, we will see. I don't know how, I don't know how much uh, the other ones have done. Like Attack of the Killer Refrigerator. Looks like there's still six sixty seven left out of two thousand, and that came out in is that February. Did so it? they definitely I, go a little slower than than Vinegar Syndrome. But I, I again, I, I I don't know. I just I think. You know, the audiences want certain things, and I think TerraVision occasionally provides those certain things. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I was, you know, I was excited for the the Linnea Quigley one, and I figured I'd give one of their other titles a chance. But, yeah, after I watched the trailer of it the day before it arrived, and I'm like, oh, God, I had no idea this movie was made in 2017. <laughs> That's the get my gun you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, it looks decent. I'll probably give it a spin at some point in the near future, but I don't feel compelled to to watch it immediately. Yeah. I am interested to see what they do, though. They they released, like, 50 hints for their next 50 releases and, you know, varying years, varying genres. So it'll be yeah. cool to see what they put out. I'll give it to Brad Henderson. I was listening to their podcast and he said, you know, ours is a label where you don't, you shouldn't feel compelled to buy everything. We're putting out stuff that we like. And if you like it, great. If you don't, that's okay too. Right. Yeah. I mean, which means the collectors are eventually going to come their way and scoop everything up. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, So then I also received my severin order of extraterrestrial visitors Aliens from the Abyss and the Comic Strip Presents. Mm. I've watched almost everything on the first disc of the Comic Strip Presents. Some of them are brilliant. Some of them, I'll admit, I don't understand because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't grow up in England in the early 80s. Yeah. But <laughs> it, it's really great. They, 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 do they look beautiful? They're they're brighter than the DVD where it was, but I I don't I wouldn't say it's it looks great at least the first two seasons like some of the episodes look rough because and again it's because all but one 
was sourced from the master tapes. Mm. So, but, you know, it's really good being able to marathon through a bunch of episodes at one time. Yeah. Uh, last night I was watching one called Eddie, Eddie Monsoon, which is like a, a biography of this horrible, horrible South African entertainer. And I, I don't think I've laughed so hard at stuff, something like that. <laughs> but and that's on that's on the bad news one. It's well, yeah, it's on uh, okay. it's on the first disc series two. Okay. Um, I I did also watch extraterrestrial visitors. That that one out of those, I mean, the alien ripoff looked pretty good too, but extraterrestrial visitors I thought looked the most interesting to me, just because it looked kind of bad. <laughs> um it was a fun movie the dubbing was horrible to it was it <laughs> yeah um as, as i started watching it i did i remember that i had seen the mystery science theater 3000 version <laughs> which I, w- would have been great if they were able to include that on as an extra mm-hmm. but i don't know it was it was if i still did drugs this this movie would be even more amazing <laughs> um so there's a caveat there if i if i feel like watching that i got no, you know i i still i still had a great time watching it because it was so ridiculous um it's it's uh, i read a review on letterbox saying this is elf on cocaine and i'm like <laughs> that might be the best review of it ever yeah yeah <laughs> um that I watched my my cauldron releases. I was I was so excited to get those because the there was a mail mishap. It was one day in Maryland, then it was in Ohio, then I got it the next day. <laughs> but um, I wa- I watched one version of Kill Butterfly Kill. I watched the American Commando Six version mm. because I, I'm interested in the. Th- in how they merged two different movies into one. And I wish, I wish I watched the better version first because (laughs) it felt like they put, first of all, if you're going to call a movie, American commandos, the people dummy dubbing the, the, the non-Asian actors should be American. (laughs) (laughs) Or yeah. more importantly, they should be commandos. None of them were commandos. <laughs> it, it looked like a bunch of middle-aged guys playing action movie in their backyard. Hmm. But that sounds pretty. <laughs> yeah, and then I watched Frankenstein eighty, which was pretty fucking sleazy. Yeah i i got the I got the one the kill butterfly kill. I didn't get Frankenstein eighty though. I mainly got the kill butterfly kill because I saw it was. So this is a is this like a sub label of Cauldron the Neon Video it, Neon, Neon Eagle, Eagle is Neon Eagle is a sub label of Cauldron and well actually it's not it's run by the guy who does Cauldron and one of the guys who runs Mondo Macabro mm, okay so but I still that's, consider it Cauldron because that's where I ordered it from yeah and I think that's the only one that's on there so far. Yeah, there's going to be another one later this year. Yeah, I, I did. I just did pre-order the three three new ones they announced. Yeah, I thought that was. Did you do the bundle? I did. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good deal for that. It is because it would be normally like ninety bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Frankenstein eighty was sleazy. I want to watch the commentary and then watch the documentary or the feature on. Uh, the Italian version on the history of Italian Frankenstein's, mm. and then today I got my my I, again my. There are so many re- potential releases of the year this year. Uh, I got I got the eighty eight films in the line of duty one through four. Mm. I, I I watched a review of it last night, <laughs> and then I ordered it and got it today. I'm like, thank. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> would you just called- Amazon it? I, I Amazon it, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was pretty cheap. It was like fifty something yesterday, plus shipping, not plus plus tax. Mm. And they offered me one day ship, and I'm like, that sounds great. Yeah, I watched one of them today, and I had never seen 
any of these movies before, but I was like, wow, I'm I'm glad I ordered it. And I'm curious why five and six were not included. <laughs> Jeez, there's that many. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, there were nine of the American commando movies. <laughs> <laughs> And I, if I can find them all on YouTube, I am going to watch all of them. <laughs> Why? Because I want to torture myself. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm more interested in that now. I didn't know that it, they kind of combined two movies. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, well, the studio IF, IFD Films and Arts was notorious. They were a Hong, they're a Hong Kong company who went and purchased movies from Taiwan and re-released them there but then for the home video market in america and other parts of europe they would create a different movies they would hire a bunch of actors i use that term loosely to come film scenes uh i was watching an interview with one on an on youtube on a youtube video and he was like a an american who moved to italy and then became pretty popular in Italian films, but then he reached the point in his career where he wasn't getting much work there. So he went to Hong Kong and IFD put him under contract for one movie. And then he got a call from a German distributor going, what the heck are you doing? Why did you make these 12 movies? <laughs> and he's like, I only shot for two days. <laughs> and that was one of their ninja series. Mm. Where, where the, the clips look interesting because one of them was wearing a headband that said ninja on it. <laughs> well, just so you know. Yeah. That's what they yeah. are. <laughs> the, you know, the ninja garb doesn't, if the ninja, you can't figure out by the ninja garb, <laughs> you can figure out by the word ninja. Yeah. yeah. It's like when people have like a Ford Taurus and they get those things across the front windshield that just say Taurus real big. <laughs> no one's ever done that for a Ford Taurus. <laughs> yeah. They've, you they've gotta get you gotta get into Ohio more. It's all over the place. <laughs> they, they've done it with pickup trucks. I see Ford and Chevy on there. Oh, I've seen it with like Saturn Ions. And... <laughs> That's just taking it too far. <laughs> but I'm also glad to see that Saturn Ions are still on the road, helping mm -hmm. pollute our environment. <laughs> Fuck that. Um, have you have you guys think who in the mail beside Kill Butterfly Kill? Uh, I did. I so that. That order that I sent or that I got um, today, I actually put in back in like the beginning of March because I wanted the um, the second site, Texas Chainsaw, and I always forget that uh, Diabolic just lumps them all until they have everything, so I just got it. What else? Um, I got Hell of the Living Dead from 88 Films. Um, I don't think I've ever seen that one. I've never heard of it. Uh, it's all it was on 4K. It's from, uh, I want to say, one of the Babas. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Know nothing else about it. Um, I got, just because I wanted to see what the label was like, I got Big Time Gambling Boss from uh, Radiance. Yeah, don't tell our friend Brian that. He said he waited too long and now it's out of print. Oh, really? Wow, that was fast. Yeah. Um yeah, so I kind of just wanted to check that check that label out and see what it's like. Um I actually just placed my first radiance order. Did you? For the the big release of Messiah Veal. Mm, nice. Another way I can say fuck you, Code Red, by <laughs> <laughs> what I'm sure will be a beautiful addition. <laughs> um and then like back in back in March they I got a email from uh Diabolic saying they had found a couple slipcover versions of the most dangerous game from Eureka. So I put an order in for that real quick because it was supposed to be out of print. Um so when I saw that I wasn't getting my my shipment until way later, I was kind of nervous that it wasn't gonna be in there, but it ended up being in there. That's good. Um, I don't think anything else came with that. Um yeah, other other than the the Texas Chainsaw Massacre one. Um, and then I got the big uh big godfather um set. I won Why? that in a, won that in a raffle for ten bucks. Okay, that's <laughs> fine. Yeah. 
Where, yeah, where, do you, I, where, where do you find these raffles at? It's a Facebook group. Send me a link. I shot one. All right. It's run by uh, Disconnected Ryan. Okay. Um, are they are they are the movies opened or are they brand new? Um, both. It, it'll say right in there. People will kind of post things they own and and kind of just they'll sign up with how however many people they want to let in the raffle and how how much each how much each uh ticket is and then it's kind of just randomly drawn at the end. I was pretty pissed when I saw that you got a uh, um that our Argento movie that was the four flies yeah so fucking pissed <laughs> yeah i was pretty lucky on that one yeah yeah well you're also lucky on this godfather thing that's been out of print for what two years now or over a year has it yeah it, it went out nice. it went out of print pretty fast hmm. i just bought the regular box set i just didn't need all the yeah i didn't need, I didn't need all the gim- the gimmick stuff and here's the thing there was a point in it in time where i love the gimmick shit like um when uh no shame was released in italian films they released a double feature with the night evelyn came out of the grave and the red queen kills seven seven times and it came with a little action figurette of the red queen <laughs> I, I was looking at a box i'm like i wish i had shelves to display this shit on i also have now that i from the a comic-con movie documentary i have a harry knowles action figure I don't want a Harry Knowles action figure. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got one. I got like a Diary of the Dead um, on DVD with came with a book. Mm. I mean, back in the day, they used to do so many of these cool sets. Uh, look, Seinfeld complete series in a ref- in Jerry's refrigerator. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then they just maybe a year ago released that Phantasm set that had like a remote control. Uh metal orb in it <laughs> arrow did that first did that i have the 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 domestic one mm. i like phantasm one phantasm two i'll admit three four and five don't do anything for me mm-hmm. i'm glad i have it but those movies yeah i mean the first one is was scary as fuck when i saw it at eight years old i should not have seen that movie <laughs> but the other ones just feel like Phantasm Ravager. It just felt sad. Mm. I mean, the special effects were terrible. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't expecting this this Godfather set to be so fucking gigantic. I don't there's no need for that for sure. I mean, there's a couple like art prints in it, so I, I get why they made it so big, but it's just, it's just so big. <laughs> um speaking of big, last Sunday we Ooh. both had some unfortunate stuff happen. Oh uh, yeah, there was a fire in my apartment building. Thank God, nothing got damaged in it. But it was weird. It's like as I as I was packing up my cat, I'm like, "Do I take movies with me? <laughs> <laughs> How will I choose?" <laughs> People just see you in the parking lot, like making trip after trip of <laughs> loading Blu-rays in your trunk. <laughs> I would. I, I would if if the fire was really bad i would have died <laughs> but your 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 basement flooded yeah well it was kind of a flood it was my fault um i don't know if i told you guys the story there's only one of us here i don't know if i well, told you oh well, yeah 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 yeah. um so i was filling up the, the sink in the kitchen to just soak the cup holder from our car and my wife had called me outside to she was planting some like bushes out there and I had went out to help her dig a hole bigger because there was a big rock in there. And then 20 minutes go by, I walk inside and I just see water billowing into the dining room. And I'm like, Oh shit. I left that water on. So I'm like panicking, trying to get all this water cleaned up. And I go down in the basement to get some more towels and it's just raining in the basement. Yeah. Just, raining all over everything <laughs> how, how much of your collection did you lose you know i didn't get a chance to go through it all um i know at least three three big criterion sets are pretty damaged um a lot of it's still in boxes and and rubber tubs so i was able to kind of 
pick him up and move him to the other half pretty quick. But um, I think there was a Scream Factory box that got hit pretty hard that I haven't had a chance to look at yet. Which one? Um, no, like a box of Scream Factory oh, movies. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, t- the next day, we had to get on a plane to go to California. So I still, we just got back today, and I haven't really had a chance to to look through it yet either. So where where in California did you go? Uh, her brother was getting married in San Francisco. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Pretty cold there. I was expecting it to be warmer than Ohio, but it was chilly. No, no. Northern California is cold. Like, I, I it was like, I felt the same way about Seattle. I thought it was going to be warmer there than it actually was. Mm-hmm. No. I lived in paradise for over three years. Where, where at? In Seattle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But. Nice. Oh. It, it was, I can tell you, during the fire, I was watching uh, my, 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 conquering my collection pick. And I'm like, I sort of started thinking, so I started watching just, it's a just Franco movie. I started watching at 11 a.m. <laughs> I was wondering if this was a universal way to tell me that you should <laughs> not be watching just Franco more movies this early in the morning. During daylight. <laughs> Yeah. I wonder what's going to happen when my, my Black Emmanuel set arrives. Yeah, I mean, so can you hear through the walls pretty good in your place? Like, if you've got, I, if you're watching that movie, are people can people hear you? I, I, I turned it down a little, quite a bit, actually. <laughs> you, know, you can hear it out in the hallway. Yeah. <laughs> I worry sometimes what my neighbors think about what I watch. <laughs> let's, say let's just say there's a lot of screaming that goes on in my apartment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mine's the same. The houses are super close, and I always have the volume up, and there's, like, the he- big window in the living room, so you can see and hear pretty much anything that's going on in there. So I'm always like, man, should I go down to the basement to watch this? <laughs> I have no choice. I don't have a basement. Yeah. I, I have a TV room, which is my living room. That's all you need. Yeah. Nothing to get but, flooded. Uh, yeah, I don't live on the top or bottom floor, so yeah, nothing to get flooded. <laughs> but let's let's actually talk about the vinegar syndrome sale first, since that is coming up. Yeah. I am not excited by it. I'm not excited about any of the releases. Yeah. I think well, I'm I'm kind of excited to see. Just I've had a blade in the dark in my watch list for so long. I don't know if it's any good, but this will be at least a chance to, for me to finally watch it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I enjoy the Boogeyman, but is it a great film? No, <laughs> <laughs> no. And I mean, this show started out as a, a vinegar syndrome show and thankfully we have evolved kind of past that Mm -hmm. but i don't know it's like i don't care about what the the secret movies are and if it if it i hope it's something really good that'll surprise me like last year with miami connection and thriller Mm -hmm. cruel picture i'm like well those are pretty awesome right but I, I don't know. Like, I've I've enjoyed a lot of the films they've released this year. Um, like last weekend I watched Five Women for the Kill for the Killer, which I thought was great. I mean, I don't know why people were giving it such shitty reviews. I was like, <laughs> wow. I mean, it's first of all you can figure out who the killer is pretty early in the movie, <laughs> but I I thought it was good. I mean, it had. It had everything I wanted in a Gialli. It had nudity. It had murder. <laughs> it had more nudity. It had more murder. <laughs> it had a chauvinist head doctor. And even more nudity. <laughs> and even more murder. Any black gloves? Say, you know, the, the killer was wearing racing gloves. Ooh. Kicking it up a notch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, <laughs> oh, all right, this... This Gialli has something different. <laughs> Racing gloves. 
which is what the what the one person everyone wanted you to think with the murder also wore. So, mm. yeah, it was it was it, I thought that was a good movie. Um, I, I like the vacations of terror films. Still haven't watched Curse of the Blue Light mm-hmm. or the VSL because I know I'd be basically waiting two months for these movies, right? For my next batch to come in. And speaking of which, I thought they were not only doing one subscriber this year. Yeah, I was I was kind of surprised to see that. I kind of, unless they just didn't get big, big numbers in that when they switched it or something. I don't know. But yeah, it seemed like it was just going to be just the yearly. I mean, I'm not pissed, but I'm also a little pissed for <laughs> for the people who did it and just want to do the half year to see how it was going along. Yeah. but. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they're going to use the subscriber week to launch a bunch of new titles that another VSU, a few more VSAs and VSL and Picarama. But I really hated going to the website every day to see what was being offered. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot of work. Yeah. 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 I mean, is if there's some good deals or something again, that'll be cool. But yeah, there's just there's just a lot going on now. <laughs> well, there, there's so many. I mean, every other label has upped their game. Mm-hmm. Like, what should I call it? Um, Severin, again, another label where you don't have to buy ever, or don't feel compelled to buy everything for collector mentality. They've been killing it this year. Mm-hmm. Like, and so is Cauldron. Aldrin has, I mean, I think if if I break it down, they have the 4K release of the year so far. Now I Aldrin haven't seen does. I haven't seen Flashdance yet, but City of the Living Dead is, I mean, it's just gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And Severn might have the box set of the year with Black Emmanuel. I'm so excited about that one. Mm-hmm. I mean, but yeah, I do think they do box sets, right? They well, they, they put do, everything into them. They do. I mean, they do every. I think they they they're really smart. They don't put co- they don't put slip covers on every release. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, it's not like you know, even vinegar syndrome. It's not like the vinegar syndrome partner labels where people are grabbing everything because they don't know which one's going to be out of. So they don't know which one's going to sell out first. Yeah, those losers. <laughs> Wouldn't they ever catch me doing that? I'm sorry, Matt. You you're part <laughs> of the problem. <laughs> like I I'm like I'm hoping that I'm hoping more of the partner labels leave vinegar syndrome. Yeah, I thought that I, I feel like I always feel like I read things, but I feel like I read something that there was there was one more leaving. I don't know who it was. I thought there was another one going to MVD. Well, I know Culture Shock is going to be releasing films outside of Vinegar Syndrome, or I've heard rumors that they're going to be releasing their shot on video porns outside of Vinegar Syndrome, mm. which is stupid. Maybe, yeah, maybe that was it. I don't see MVD releasing that that, that kind of film, those kind of right. films either. <laughs> right. No, it's just I think I think it's just a little bit of what am I trying to say? I think it's a little bit of okay, we were with them for a while. We've cultivated a new audience that w- that would have ignored us previously. Mm-hmm. You know what? We're gonna like television. We're we're gonna hire one of Vinegar Syndrome's people to help produce our films, and I think that's given them a leg up. But I think if I would, same thing with Fun City. It's like, okay, MVD, you're gonna get us actually in stores. That's great. Um, I I mean, I don't think Agfa will will disappear from them. I think, you know it's pretty symbi- symbiotic mm-hmm. because they, they, they're basically the same audience. 
But I could see culture shock. I could see altered innocence leaving at some point. Yeah. I mean, it is it is nice for, you know, people looking for different kind of stuff. But at the same time, it, there is just, there's a lot on there, especially if you have a mentality where you feel like you have to get everything. But I, th- I think that's that, that mentality is coming to an end. I, I don't think, I think the boot, boutique labels, they reach a point where it's like, oh, they're not cool anymore. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I've said this before. I don't want to sound like a broken record. I think at some point, vinegar syndrome is going to reach that that point, yeah. if not this year, in the very in the next year or two. Because other labels are doing things better. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I mean, I, I was actually shocked to see Cauldron with their th- their next wave releasing three films. That's pretty bold of them at one time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it is. Their stuff seems pretty well priced. It looks like they're... Have all of their... Has all of their stuff had slipcovers or... Well, to be fair, I, I came on the train pretty late. I, I did not hear about them. Mm-hmm. So when I ordered American Rickshaw and the other movie from Wave One, I got them without slip covers or okay. the booklets, and I'm fine with that. Yeah, I mean American Rickshaw is one of the greatest movies I have ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, and here's the thing: I don't feel compelled to order all their stuff either. There was a month, there was a wave. I'm like, these don't interest me. Mm-hmm. But. Anytime someone releases Italian schlock, I'm going to be first in line to get it. Right. Because the movies are so crazy, so stupid, and a lot of fun. But speaking so of a lot of... It's, oh, go on. No, I was just going to say, so do you think it's a better a better system for, for the collector where, you know, it's something something like Cauldron where they're kind of... You know, yeah, they're not as big as Vinegar Syndrome, but it seems like they might be kind of picking and choosing their movies a little more, releasing releasing less. Or do you think it's better that Vinegar Syndrome is just blasting well, out stuff? <laughs> well, again, you, you can't, you can't, you can't, it's, it's, you can't compare apples to oranges. Vinegar Syndrome is a big company, right? I mean, they have their film restoration. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure their parent company does more things than just vinegar syndrome and the partner labels. Mm-hmm. And I, I was talking to our friend, Brian, not our co-host, our, friend, our other friend, Brian, that I'm pretty sure the vinegar syndrome titles are lost leader items for them. Mm. That it, it makes more sense and money for them with the partner labels who they don't have to restore those. Or if they do, they get paid for. And then they get a, you know, do the slip covers, and I'm sure they make a nice percentage of the profits. Right. Acting yeah. as your distribution arm. And at one point where the subscriptions paid for the for the releases, that's what pays for the releases now. Mm-hmm. But it also sucks because they're, again, sound like a broken record. They've been going more and more mainstream lately with some of their films this past month and excluded there was nothing mainstream <laughs> about these three films right <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm convinced they're going to release more and more sub labels where the vinegar syndrome label is going to be insignificant mm. yeah i mean i would kind of i don't know I, I i do kind of wish the main label would kind of go back to you know how you were saying before just kind of at least for me, stuff no one has ever heard of and, you know, more exploitation kind of stuff like that and leave leave the mainstream stuff for if they want to do that on a sub-label or something, but... I mean, VSU should be the, the only mainstream stuff that we see from them. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or if they're going to re-release something do it as well as you did Thriller and Miami Connection. Mm -hmm. Where it makes you think, okay, the old DVDs I have from Synapse are (laughs) are history, and so are so is my Draft House Films version of of Miami Connection. Yeah. And hopefully we'll see more of Draft House Films stuff come out through 
vinegar syndrome. I I, I would love a, a a nicer version of Miss Forty Five on Four K. Yeah. All right. Let's get to our conquering the collection instead of our pity party. What it what what, <laughs> what 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 is what is your pick? Uh, I picked a. Uh, I watched two. They were kind of connected. Um. The first one I watched, uh, Captain America from the 1990 like, Show Factory version. Correct. <laughs> that movie's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it definitely seemed kind of like a like a main made for TV kind of kind of movie. Um, it it basically I think it got very limited theatrical distribution and premiered on Sci Fi or. Mm-hmm. HBO. I re- I remember watching that going, man, it, this better not be as good as it gets for Captain America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was just kind of, I mean, it's it kind of <clears throat> makes you realize just how, I don't know, like comical the, the character idea is. It's like, you know, this, they create this, this superhero kind of, and they are sending him into war, you know, instead of camouflage, he's just some bright blue rubber suit. Um, but yeah, but, but to be fair, it was a Roger Corman. Was it Roger Corman produced? Um, I don't know if he produced it or not. I know that it was Albert Keane directed it. Yeah. That's the guy you want directing your Captain America movie. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, he kind of added some cool, uh, I don't know, kind of camp to it, but um, producer Manahem Golan. Okay. Kind of oh, that's right. That that's, that's right. Um, Roger Corman to the Fantastic Four. Mm. Which I started to watch that on the plane and fell asleep instantly. The, oh. like, never released one. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have I've had bootlegs for that for years. Yeah. So yeah, I, I had kind of always seen this one at um uh family video when they were still open up here and I ended up ordering it a long time ago and just never watched it. So I figured I'd throw it in. Um, um fun, fun fact about this movie, the guy who played Steve Rogers, Captain America, is Matt Salinger, mm-hmm. a descendant of the great author J. D. Salinger. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they said I read something or they said that and I was like, wow, he really made a name for himself. <laughs> he was Captain well, America in, in 1990. <laughs> yeah, I I have the Shout Factory version. I still haven't opened it. Yeah. At some point I was going to watch it for a bad movie night, but I couldn't do that to myself. Yeah, I mean, there there really was nothing, nothing good about it. There was a couple of funny parts. It was kind of funny when they would they reference like Superman and Human Torch and stuff, and but other than that, it's just real, real crappy. Well, it was um, even crappy. Wasn't the Red Skull Italian? Um, it might have been, yeah, yeah. Well, it was hard because there were no subtitles for anything that was in a foreign language. Like, even if you turn the main subtitles on. Like it just said, uh, um, like in I can't remember what language it said that it was in, but you, I couldn't understand what they were saying. Well, the actor Scott <laughs> Pollan, the Red Skull was given a name, Tadzio de Santos, mm-hmm. Spanish or Mexican, Spanish <laughs> or Italian, not German, right. and the Red Skull is German. Right, right. I mean, he could have been a fascist in Italy during the World War Two, but no. Red- <laughs> Red Skull needs to be a Nazi. Yeah. And that, that's also something that, that something pissed me off in the first Captain America movie where he was Hydra. It's like, mm-hmm. why can't you say the word Nazi? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this one, they just. Well, by the way, we don't support Nazis on the show. Just to... right. Yeah, yeah. I'm Jewish and you're from Ohio. Yeah. Where there are a lot of Nazis. Uh, I saw the videos. <laughs> um. But yeah, this one he was a he was like a little boy that just got stolen from his house because he was smart and good at piano. He was stolen by uh, the Germans. So yeah, he, I don't think he was German. 
the Red Skull is in the <laughs> comics. He was he he was he was very hateful. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm surprised you've never seen this one before. But I will not. Uh, I will not scold you for yeah. like most of your early your 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 conquering your collection pieces. This one, uh, you will scold me for. Um, I watched um an Arrow release that I had sitting around, and it was Flash Gordon. And how, get... how, <laughs> how the fuck <laughs> haven't you seen Flash Gordon before? I think it's one that I have seen like little clips of here and there because I've definitely seen like the the theme song in clips and stuff, but I've all never right, sat right. down and watched the movie. So I, uh, I saw it theatrically when I was a kid, but I also saw it theatrically when I lived in Pittsburgh. So around 2013 and no, 2012. And they had a screening of it at the Warhol Museum. And Sam Jones, Flash F and Gordon himself was there. <laughs> and afterwards he got on stage and did some talk. He goes, this is the first time I've ever seen the movie. And I am like, how the fuck? <laughs> haven't you seen this movie before <laughs> but we we got to ask questions and i'm like i just have one quest question will you save each and every one of us <laughs> and then someone in the back of me went flash <laughs> 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 yeah man i i i actually really really love this movie and i i don't get how it how it didn't have like I know it has like a cult following, but I don't know how it didn't get like a bigger, a bigger following in like theatrically. And... I can tell you, it looked like shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean it think, must think, have. Think, think about, it, think about it. We were we were in a post Star Wars world at the time, and mm-hmm. this film was made as a reaction to Star Wars. It did not look as good as Star Wars did. <laughs> in fact, it was very campy. Yeah, it didn't take itself too seriously, which which is one of the one of the charms of flash gordon but if you were a kid who saw star wars you saw empire strikes back you're like well this isn't as good <laughs> and the other thing is it i think a ra- it was too long of a runtime i mean it's close to 2 hours right or a little um, bit it just under yeah yeah it it when i when i when i watched my arrow version of it it just felt long yeah, I mean, I guess it did a little bit, but I, I was just enjoying it the whole time. I, I loved the, like, kind of mix between sci-fi and fantasy. I loved the, the costumes, the colors, obviously the music. <laughs> I thought I loved that it was just like, what was he, a football player? He was Flash Gordon. Of course he was a football yeah. player. <laughs> just Fun fact, his voice, like was du- his voice, I think, was dubbed in this movie. Really? I don't think Sam Jones did his own voice for it. Huh. Interesting. Because he also said My Chauffeur was the first movie he did with his own voice. Hmm. Or was it 10? I, know, was no, I, I don't remember. I, I didn't. This just wasn't my pick. I didn't do any research into it. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't do much either. But yeah, I just I just really liked it. Liked It had cool creatures, that, that like spider monster that was going to take him down in the swamp. I thought it was really cool. I thought the special effects were pretty good for was, you know not were, a Star Wars were, budget. They were they were a step <laughs> above Doctor Who. <laughs> not Doctor Who currently, Doctor Who in the seventies and eighties. Yeah, yeah. I think this would be a cool one to to revisit nowadays with yeah. a with a reboot. Uh, you know, well, technically that was a reboot. Was it? There were. I mean, Flash Gordon was big in. Uh, serials in the 30s and 40s with buster crab in the in the title role mm. i mean it was it was it was that was considered sci-fi classic i i don't think this version will ever be considered sci-fi classic i mean it's a cult movie but i think they took they made too many of the wrong moves during the production of it to make it a great movie same thing with uh warren Beatty's dick tracy Mm-hmm. love that movie too i mean it looks <laughs> great um but i i think with dick tracy they were trying to do what 
Robert Rodriguez Robert Rodriguez succeeded with an, an uh, Sin City make the comic book come to life and he wanted to make right. the comics come to life but I think some of the actors in their their makeup just looked really bad <laughs> yeah yeah I definitely didn't have that going for it but and, and some same thing we like the, the Hawk people in in Flash Gordon they looked really cheesy mm-hmm yeah, I just, I don't know. This movie just really did it for Look, me. Look, I, I love Flash Gordon <laughs> as much as you do. <laughs> I, I'm not trying to shit on it. I, I'm just saying, when I was a kid, I loved it, and I could never understand why there wasn't a sequel. Yeah. But when I watch it now, I'm like, okay, there are so many reasons why this movie <laughs> doesn't work. Was this, so this was 1980. I, was this Timothy Dalton before he was Bond? Yes. Okay. Yes. Also, fun fact about this movie, this version of Flash Gordon, two of the actors appeared on Doctor Who. Really? Uh, the the leader of the Hawk people was uh, a character during the Sixth Doctor, and Timothy Dalton was in David Tennant's original last episode's as the Rassilon. Hmm. Nice. And now we're going to see David Tennant's new last episodes. <laughs> I should probably start that at some point before I get too old so I can see all of it. You don't, you can't see all of it. It's <laughs> impossible to see all of Doctor Who <laughs> when a ton of the early episodes are lost. Just start, uh, with, that... just start with Christopher Eccleston. Just start there. What number Doctor is he? He is the eighth tone. He's the eighth doctor. Ooh, that seems like a lot of doctors to skip. You really don't need to see him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. The, there are only a certain amount of episodes available of the first and second. And most of the second stories are gone. Mm. All right. Now... Let's talk about my 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 conquering my collection pick because we are not going to have a lot to say about it. <laughs> my mine was uh, Macumba Sexual from Jess Franco. Um, I bought it during one of the so one of the sales from Severin. It was one of the picks. I only watched it for one reason. Well, one that I bought it and needed to watch it, but Ajita Wilson is a star as. Princess Obongo. Obongo. Okay. Obongo. And she is she was in some of the in a couple of the Emmanuel adjacent films. And I started reading up on her and she was supposed not supposedly the one article said supposedly like this trans actress in the nineteen seventies. And I was really interested in seeing that. And I mean everyone's great in this role, but there's too much sex. There's way too much sex. <laughs> this movie is basically the story of Dracula. A woman and her husband are on vacation. She works in real estate, and her company's located in America and wants her to go to this island uh, nearby where she is staying to meet this countess who she's been having sexual dreams of to go so she could buy property in Atlantic City. There was no real plot beyond this. Just a <laughs> lot of naked bodies, and I can't even tell you what happened at the end <laughs> because that's when the fire alarm started. So what you're saying is you started a fire in the apartment building to get out of watching this movie. No, no, no. Someone in their kitchen started the fire. But I didn't start the fire. <laughs> no, I mean, it, here's the thing. All of Franco's movies are shot really well. And sometimes there's a good story to go with it. This is not one of those movies. Yeah. I, I was at a point going, come on, maybe we could do a little bit less sex and a lot more plot <laughs> development. <laughs> and I'm just sure Franco shot this in three days. But it looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. God bless Severin for putting it out. <laughs> And don't watch at 11 o'clock in the morning. 
do you think that made it worse for you? Do you think if you would, if this would have been like a 9 p.m. or? Well, again, I only had so much time last week and I did not plan my, my plan my week properly. And I'm kind of glad that there's a fire in my building in your, in your basement flooded because I still, and by that point, I still had not watched uh, or rewatched the movie we're talking about today. Mm. But let, let's let's jump right into that because I have nothing else to say about my combo sexual. Yeah. <laughs> let's talk about Freeway Two: Confessions of a Trick Baby. I will read the synopsis. Hopefully, Vinegar Syndrome site is still up right now. It is. I was just on it for the sale stuff. All right. Freeway 2, Confessions of a Trick Baby. Did that come out this year or was this in November? No, this was announced at the beginning of the year. I think this was this year, yeah. It came out with Primal Rage. Yep. White girl, Natasha Leone, is a twisted teenage prostitute with a bad attitude and a nasty eating disorder. She has bulimia. Who's been sent to the slammer for 25 years. Her cellmate, Cyclona, is equally deranged, being a vicious killer, and is like minds attract the two are quick to form a truly twisted alliance. When the opportunity arises, White Girl and Cyclona manage to escape from the pen and embark on a nonstop orgy of violence and debauchery, all while hoping to make it across to the border into Mexico in order to seek refuge with Cyclona's proxy caretaker, Sister Gomez. However, there's a big hitch in their plans, as the good sister isn't as she seems. Somehow weirder and sleazier and even more drop jaw-dropping than his predecessor, director Matthew Bright's in-name-only sequel, Freeway 2 Confessions of a Trick Baby, regurgitates onto the screen with unflinching barrage of gross-out gags and a depth, so, depth social satire, starring Natasha, Natasha Leone in one of her first and most controversial starring roles alongside Vincent Gallo and Maria... Celedonio, and a rare, uh, rare on-screen appearance from filmmaker John Landis. Blah, blah, blah. Vinegar Syndrome is delayed to present this UHD debut of this demented reimagining of Hansel and Gretel. Newly restored in 4K from its original 35 millimeter, 35 millimeter original camera negative, jam-packed with extras, and looking so perversely crystal clear, you can almost taste the perversion. Yes, you could. <laughs> so, <laughs> one thing about Freeway and Freeway 2, they are both pretty funny movies. But, all right. So, the the movie starts out with the trial of Natasha Leone's character and her lawyer and pimp played by David <laughs> Allen Greer in one of his greatest on-screen performances. <laughs> um, she gets found guilty by the judge played by uh, the director of Animal House himself, John Landis, <laughs> and Kentucky Fried Movie, and so many other great films. Was, again, great in his role. Is sent to first a hospital to deal with her disorders until she turns 19 and then would be sent to the slammer for the next 25 years. On her way to the jail, she meets Cyclona, who is also being transported there, and they start talking, and Natasha and White Girl does not does not like her at all. Then their cellmates and again, there's a lot of animosity. Then Cyclona says, do you want me to eat your pussy? She says, no, goes to bed and wakes up to her roommate masturbating. Pretty uh, ferociously. Yeah. I might add. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yes. She was a woman on a mission. <laughs> now, we did learn Cyc- 
no, Natasha, a white girl, had saying she was a prostitute is actually an overstatement. Mm -hmm. She lured tricks into somewhere and knocked them out and stole their money, which I think one of the greatest, my favorite scenes in the film was after she was found guilty, all these guys in, in neck braces and bandages yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> celebrate. <laughs> um, the, the, the prison scenes are pretty crazy. Um, all the girls with bulimia forced to eat, and then pu- the, 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 the the synchronized puking is yeah my favorite parts. <laughs> while Cyclona was with her girlfriend who had one arm. <laughs> I, I love movies that don't explain the weirdness of it. Mm-hmm. And they they had a cruel woman who ran the prison white girl goes into solitary confinement for about for a month then cyclona brings up this whole idea how they need to escape and go down to mexico to find sister gomez it's during this stuff we've already really found we've learned that cyclona murdered her entire family but we also learned that she's batshit crazy that she believes in ufo's and <laughs> she was very much sexually abused by her father mm-hmm. which we learn in one a line that makes you double take going first time i blew my dad <laughs> um yeah this might also be the easiest prison to escape from <laughs> <laughs> i mean if anything i've learned from prison breaks i've learned from the show prison break <laughs> and fast 10 which we'll talk about at the end. I mean, was, how, what? I was going to say, it was simultaneously the easiest to escape from, but at the same time, they had the most um, <laughs> thorough way to make sure that you were going to die shortly after. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was they, a good thing. It was a good thing Cyclona knew how to take the pus out, and yeah. then she wanted to bite her ass. <laughs> It's they apparently just poisoned all the, the bottoms of all the fences. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't poisoned. It was a scab. It got, it got infected. At least I don't think oh, it was. was it? Oh, I thought that she said, uh, oh, yeah, maybe she did say pus. I thought she said suck the poison out. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's the infection. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, And then she said, do you want me to suck it out your ass? I'm like, all right, that might be a little. <laughs> all right. Then comes another one of my favorite sequences in the film. They they they, they find this this house. Cyclona goes in. Um we we Cyclona's walking towards it. Then we cut inside the house and realize it's this cute old couple with their grandson about to go on a date. Mm-hmm. And grandpa says you're not borrowing my car. He's like, I think he said I'll take my own. He goes to fix it. He's under the car. She just casually walks by <laughs> and kicks the jack off. <laughs> and the car just crushes him. <laughs> she shows no remorse. I also need to go back and say the only way white girl was going to go with her was if she took her medicine. Mm-hmm. Thank God she didn't take her medicine because the next sequences were just brilliant. She walks to the house and the old guy is watching Freeway on the TV. <laughs> it's like the same thing I loved about Babyface 2 was there was a poster for Babyface on the wall. <laughs> I just love it when movies get meta. Mm-hmm. Um so she goes in there and ends up killing the old people. Her and white girl come back in. They white girl just because of her bulimia goes and eats everything and everything <laughs> and pukes while Cyclona goes upstairs and masturbates while the two dead people are holding hands on the bed. <laughs> white girl yeah. comes up, notices it. They get into a fight. They leave the place. Um, they then hit the road with the stolen car. 
I, I thought this sequence was kind of long and kind of was maybe too long. Um, they, they there's a cop that they see. They start freaking out. Cyclona pisses herself. <laughs> um, she goes on and on about Sister Gomez. Then they hop a train, and on the train we see the only returning actor from the first. Uh, freeway, Michael Weiss, better known as TV's The Profiler. <laughs> Just playing an even scuzzier dirt ball than he did in the first one. <laughs> they beat him up, kick him off the train, steal his, steal his crack cocaine. <laughs> um, then Cyclona kills a railroad worker, steals his lunch and money. White girl is pissed again. She has a vision of Sister Gomez and UFOs. And then they finally get into Mexico where they kill some people on the on the American side of the border and then head into Baja and Tijuana. Mm -hmm. And I thought these sequences could have been longer. Um, they get a hotel room. They have sex. And um, they realize they can easily rob people there. Like they robbed the, these two soldiers they saw walking down the street or yeah, sailors. Um, they're walking through Tijuana, which looks absolutely beautiful in this movie <laughs> to, to a, to a bunch of nineties music from Veruca Salt and Juliana Hatfield. <laughs> <laughs> then they find, they meet sister Gomez played creepily by Vincent Gallo. Now, I always think Vincent Gallo is pretty much a creep no matter what. Same. He, he, but, yeah. <laughs> but he's he's extra creepy in this movie. Um, Sister Gomez runs an orphanage and has orphans. Um, he makes white girl work for her stay there by going out and rolling customers and giving the money to her mm -hmm. or to them. Um, then we reach our climax where we realize, oh, some cops are on, are chasing after them. We reach our climax where she discovers that Sister Gomez is a pedophile and child killer. Um, then we really, then we discover that Cyclona's background is even more horrifying because Sister Gomez called her little her little uh, movie star, and she was basically forced to watch her kill sister Gomez, kill kids and watch her old movies in front of her. And then, I mean, it was disturbing. Mm -hmm. Like Kiefer Sutherland's character in the first one was disturbing, but Vincent Gallo's character was even more disturbing. Then there's a shootout. Um, they put Vincent Gallo in an oven and kill him like the wicked witch. <laughs> I, I kind of suddenly liked the way his face transformed. Yeah, I thought that was cool. And then she, white girl kills Cyclona because she asked her to. And the police barge in, they make a deal, and everything works out okay. <laughs> David Allen Greer is back. They She jumps in his arms and dry humps him. Everyone's happy. She's free. She's no longer a criminal. <laughs> and we have a happy ending. <laughs> is that about cover it? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I was going to ask you, what do you think? What do you think the deal was that was made? Oh, the deal was they would get the credit for shutting down this horrible P file ring. Yeah. And they would say she really helped out. <laughs> I just thought it was weird because, I mean, they could have taken the credit anyway and still just also gotten the credit for taking her down and but remember remember she, she was also declared innocent by a technicality mm -hmm. and they also said that she they got a confession from cyclona that she was i believe they got one where she wasn't white girl was not part of the killer killing mm -hmm. so she got to go with her lawyer slash pimp man <laughs> Um, 
So unlike the original Freeway, which I watched on VHS when it originally came out, or DVD, I can't remember. I never, I've never, I had never seen this movie until I got it back in January. Mm -hmm. I think I like this one better than the first one. I think, I think there are parts that I, that I do like more. I feel like the first one was a better made movie. Like when I watched that one, I was surprised about, you know, obviously you see Kiefer Sutherland and Reese Witherspoon on there, but. But Reese Witherspoon was a no name commodity at this time. And yeah. Um, it also had Oliver Stone producing it. Yeah. And Danny Elfman composing. Like I was I was watching those opening credits and I was just like, whoa, this is this is like a real movie. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was, but I, I think while this one had a smaller budget, I think it was a bigger movie. Mm. Um before I before I continue, do you know what a trick baby is? I was gonna bring that up too. I I was very confused by the it because I was kind of picturing it as being a baby born from a from a trick, <laughs> but I don't think we got anything that alluded to that. I I have a feeling that she's kind of the same character that Reese Witherspoon played in the first one, where her mom was a whore. Mm. I'm sorry, a sex worker. <laughs> and her dad her, and her dad was a John because that's what a trick baby was. Right. Now, now this movie in a way also paid homage to the film Trick Baby. Based on the novel by White Iceberg Slim. Because in that movie, the main act one of the main actors was his mom was a black hooker and his dad was a white John and he was a, a half black person who came out looking white and they called them white folks hmm. and in this movie they called her white girl so i think there was a little bit of homage to that yeah film um if it's still available in the next kino sale you should order it it's a kino movie trick baby yeah, trick baby okay it's right. on the writings of iceberg slim um but i i don't know i, I just felt this movie to be jived better because I I think the end goal there was more tension than there was in the original one. Not saying there wasn't any tension. I mean Kiefer Sutherland was the evil you knew right away. Mm -hmm. And Reese Witherspoon was not a, a bad person. Um Latasha White Girl and Cyclona were not good people to begin with. Right. But when we got to the villain of the story, Sister Gomez, I think it was a harder punch to the gut because Vincent Gallo played that character so creepy like a normal person in meeting that character or they're they're they would be shiver their spine would be shivering their spidey senses would be going off <laughs> because there's something not right mm -hmm. and not saying you know being trans is is wrong which we'll never say it's that you could tell this character was up to no good right and if you played along more to the Hansel and Gretel uh, theme that this movie was under, you're like, holy fuck. This character is doing bad things. But even though it's it's hitting you right in the face, there are points where I forgot this was Hansel and Gretel. I yeah. forgot. And it was so obvious. Oh, let's leave the <laughs> let's leave the trail of crack cocaine. And... Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> it was, I mean, it was a punch to the gut when you realized how evil Sister Gomez was. Yeah, I I think that that was kind of my biggest gripe with the movie. I, I kind of wish that we got to Sister Gomez sooner. Because I think that this was like a an hour thirty, and I don't think we got to her until like last, an hour ten. Yeah, well, 
I think it was in the last. I, I as I said, the middle part plotted along too. It yeah. felt too slow. Um, I just I, thought the I, third act was really good, and I would have liked to see more of. No, exactly. What exactly. was going on there? Exactly. Um, I did realize something when I was watching this. Nat- Natasha Leone has one character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> that one <laughs> I mean she she was great in this movie I mean I think the entire cast was great but I think she was just phenomenal in it the only thing that did not work for me was the love story between her and Cyclona it yeah. felt really forced mm-hmm I mean, yeah, it just felt really, really forced. Yeah, and I kind of felt like they were going to use it to kind of really build up at the end because, you know, they made a big deal that white girls got to, is going to have to shoot her in the end to not go to prison. So I felt like, oh, they're going to kick in a romance story with them to make it a, a harder decision at the end, but it really just kind of happened and <laughs> well it, the thing is there was no lead up to it yeah i mean they were based i mean cyclona wanted it but white girl did not mm-hmm. and to me it felt like it felt like all right we got to get this story point across because the big shit is coming down in the next act and we want even more tension to it Mm-hmm. But here's the thing: pretty much as soon as we got to Sister Sister Gomez, Cyclona just appeared. Yeah, <laughs> and you saw her in. You saw her at a. It's when Sister Gomez was giving a, a sermon. All the kids were clapping, for some reason, even though they would not understand that. And you saw some weird guy there. Yeah. And you also well. There's also the weird hunchback guy with goat legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was very interesting. But yeah, I, I think for me, parts of the movie fell apart in the second act. I mean, the first act was great. It, the second act just took too long. Yeah. No, there, 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 there were parts I really liked about it. I liked the cops in pursuit. I liked the 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 shooting at the border. I I love that. Cyclona was this wild card that made white girl look normal. Mm-hmm. And when you do something again, these are these are bad characters. Like they they are bad people. And when you have one that's so much worse than the other. And you're going, oh, crap. I feel bad for all of white girls' victims. But she looks so innocent compared to Cyclone. <laughs> yeah. So with with um, Sister Gomez, like, so we're to assume that that was like a, a witch, right? Like she had some powers? No, no, no. I think... Again, the, they're using the whole metaphor of Hansel and Gretel. Like, I, I don't think in reality the face transformed like it did. I think that was just something we saw from... We just saw the evil personified in that character. Sister Gomez was not a witch. So I kept going back and forth because there was a scene where they, they walk in on her little seance or whatever they were doing where her huge penis is revealed um and she's saying like i've lived a a thousand centuries i'll live a thousand more or something yeah 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 you know what if when you run a sex cult what else is a leader going to say yeah you you got then i but then i thought that she was like like possessing almost or actually giving visions to Cyclona because her eyes were getting so fucked looking. I don't think that. I, I think Cyclona was... Think think about this. When they returned to Sister Gomez, 
or when mm-hmm. she returned, she had built up this fantasy life about how Sister Gomez helped her as a kid. Mm-hmm. When in truth, Sister Gomez made her the psychopath that she was. Because as a kid, she went through something no other, no kid should go through. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we also can guess that, again, her her dad was doing bad things to her as well. And then she built her dad up as this villain when it should have been Sister Gomez all along. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I kept going back and forth and I couldn't decide. I, I mean, I guess the only unexplained is the is the guy with goat legs. <laughs> Again, <laughs> was that real? Yeah. Because... Again, our, our our two main characters, who's basically we're watching this movie through their eyes, mm-hmm. are not reliable narrators, right? And they might have a different view of the world, especially when you're crazy. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, think about it in Cyclona's mind. Everyone was everything that she knew when she was a kid were monsters, right? Yeah. But the one, the thing that I can't get is how was she, how was Sister Gomez able to last that long? Why were there so many kids in her care? It's Tijuana, man. <laughs> well, this movie had showed there's something worse than the donkey show in TJ. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean it felt like in the first one, I mean, there was tension for Reese Witherspoon's character to get away from the big bad wolf. Mm -hmm. These characters were walking into the big bad wolf's lair. Yeah. Yeah, I do feel like this one did have more of a you know, I want to see what they're I want to see what's going to happen when they get where they're supposed to be going kind of thing. And that's I think that kind of contributes to I really wish they would have got there sooner because when they got there it was it was pretty messed up. <laughs> no, I I'm I'm going to play devil's advocate. Mhm. If we had more Sister Gomez, would that have made the parts with that character seem longer than it needed to be? Um, possibly, but it would have been kind of, I don't I know. Mean, I, it, I, as I said, I'm not a fan of Vincent Gallo. Yeah. Um, and I I have friends who are, who I've, I need to talk to about this film with them if they've ever seen it. <laughs> But I don't think, I think he's, again, a very creepy person and actor. But when you have a villain like Sister Gomez, you don't want to have them have too much screen time. You just want the right amount of time with them. Yeah. Yeah, I, and, and and to be the devil's, devil's advocate too, That I do think that's, that sort of contributed to the, you know, the, the the pedophile ring discovery being so kind of like a, a slap in the face because it is just like, oh, shit, you just find this out. And then for the next 10 minutes, it's just mayhem in there. And then so I feel like that does kind of contribute to it just because it is such a short kind of thing. But I, I would have much rather have spent more time in Tijuana in the second act. Mm hmm. And them finding Sister Gomez as a start of the third act. Yeah. Instead of TJ being the second act. Mm-hmm. Instead of TJ being the entire third act. Right. Uh, yeah, much less time spent on the road. More time in TJ. And more time to develop the relationship between Cyclona and White Girl. Mm-hmm. Every time they said her name, I just kept thinking of American Gladiators, too. Wasn't that, uh, wasn't that the name of one of them, Cyclona? I had never watched an episode of American Gladiators. Oh, uh, Robert, Robert, Robert. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> I draw the line somewhere. 
of, of my, my, my fake sports entertainment. <laughs> uh, pretty sure it was, though. <laughs> I don't know. We can do some research later. So, all right. <laughs> so, how many evil witches would you give this movie? <laughs> um, I, 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 I enjoyed it overall. There was a lot of, that I liked in it, but I just feel like some of the pacing was off. I'm going to go... I'm going to go three evil witches. Okay, hold on. Let me pull up my probably not very brilliant um, <laughs> review of this film. All right. Well, let me read my review on Letterboxd. If you want to follow me, it's at Robert2339. You'll see me with a dramatic pose in my avatar. Um, I said, the incredibly true story of two criminal girls in love. More sleazy than the first freeway and a little more interesting. Natasha Leone and Maria Caledona were fabulous, but the real breakout star was Vincent Gallo with Sister Gomez. I can't believe I wrote that. His character is one of the most vile, villain, vile villains in cinema. The fact that he plays the role with such fake sincerity makes him even more vile. So I give this three and a half dead witches. Oh, nice. yeah. Um pretty close on that one. Yeah. Before we go, before we go, I did go see Fast X in the theater yesterday. Is it is this gonna be the last one? Oh no 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 no, uh, no. I was gonna say was it gonna, is it a good wrap up but <laughs> no there's this movie is the first in half the second act of a larger movie <laughs> okay I'm, I'm just gonna say jason momoa as the villain dante is so over the top <laughs> there's no way he's not going to join the family in the 13th movie <laughs> <laughs> is this the one that they're going to space in no they were going was... to space in nine. Oh, uh, i'm like <laughs> like five behind i, I i'm actually going to rewatch the entire saga this summer <laughs> to remind myself where it started. <laughs> yeah. Just, just a simple street race between two, two normal cars. No, one between a cop and a villain. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 for, you have to forget that Dom was the villain. In the first movie. <laughs> yeah. They had no tanks. They had no submarines. <laughs> but there, there was, there was, a, there was a genius scene in this film where the new head of the the agency was basically giving you background on the entire series, <laughs> and he was like, "Everyone, Dom corrupts people. <laughs> Paul Walker corrupted. <laughs> the Rock corrupted." <laughs> The Brazilian police officer who died, who Charlie Theron killed, corrupted. Every every law enforcement agent he meets <laughs> is corrupted. I'm like, wow, you you are not wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but hey, I just want to go to a barbecue. <laughs> you got to get the invite. I'm not. I don't want to spoil the film for anybody. But my favorite part of the movie was when I was walking out with a a girl and her dad. And the young girl was explaining to her dad the entire flat, Fast and Furious saga. And he goes, you know, I've seen them all with you. <laughs> <laughs> she thought her dad was too old to remember. <laughs> I'm pretty sure before she was born, he was at the first one in the theater, probably oh, yeah. dating her mom. <laughs> and then with her whispering to him, you're Fast and Furious too. Yeah. <laughs> and did not mean it as a compliment. <laughs> but again, I, I, I hate this trend where every movie now has to be t over two hours long. Oh, uh, was it a long one? Two and a half. Mm. And again, AMC played 30 minutes of trailers beforehand. Yep. And they're probably all ones you've seen. Most of them were. Yeah. You know, there's a new Wes Anderson movie coming out. I do think I heard that yeah. there was, yeah. Yeah, that was the most interesting trailer I saw before it. Mm -hmm. I almost went to see another movie last night. Uh, the 
the at the, the theater down the road from where I live was showing Doom Generation, but then I remembered I had to watch Freeway too. So <laughs> I uh I uh I did my skip. I, I skipped. I watched a double feature of the Linnea Quigley horror workout and and this film. Yeah. Speaking of Freeway Two, um, we have all of Matthew Bright's movies except for one from Vinegar Syndrome. You think we're gonna get his uh, get his last one here? I'm guessing we will. I I I have a feeling it's not an if; it's a when. Yeah. I'm sure they'll make a big deal of it being the debut of the uh, the director's cut. No, oh, these will be all. He only made four movies. Yeah, he only directed four. That's a letterbox says at least. Hmm. Freeway, Freeway Two, Ted Bundy, and Tiptoes. <laughs> Interesting. What, what do you think of Matthew Bright as a director? <laughs> um well i haven't seen ted bundy to throw it in but i mean these these three they're definitely definitely interesting and it seems like he kind of is trying to definitely throwing back to a previous kind of genre of film um yep. yeah I'd, I'd say just it's definitely fucking weird it's yep. a weirdo. <laughs> um, I, I I do I do want to end this show pretty soon, but I I want to end it with a little tribute. On Friday, we lost an amazing actor. Um, born in nineteen thirty three and died in two thousand twenty three. He was a guy who we once thought was on a downward spiral in the sixties, but when he saved Sharon Tate from the the Manson family. Well, they never actually made it to the Tate house. They went to his house as he survived an attack from the Manson family. His career was on the uprise. Um, he made such great films as the 14 fist of McCluskey, Nebraska, Nebraska Jim, um, the fireman series that was straight to video. And he was also in the classic coming home in a body bag. Um, Rick Dalton will miss you. I got to tell you, I for sure thought you were going to go Jim Brown on that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, I thought for sure you were about to go Jim Brown on that one. <laughs> uh, I mean, we lost Jim Brown too, but, and they both made such great contributes to cinema. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Jim Brown, did, Jim, Jim Brown did make slaughter. <laughs> <laughs> very sad. Very sad. I, I know. <laughs> I, I know this Tuesday I will be tuning into the video archives podcast so we can hear their tribute to <laughs> one of the greatest actors who never lived, Rick Dalton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, before we leave, I want to announce next week's episode. We It's the end of May right now, and we know there's going to be a great rest of the year of big releases. So we are going to look back at the last five months with our 10 favorite releases each. It could be Criterion, it could be Vinegar Syndrome, it could be any label that released something that we bought. Even mainstream? Or are we just sticking to it could be mainstream? It could be mainstream as well. All right. There's there's no rules. I'm not making that mistake again. <laughs> Was that a mistake? Oh shit. It shouldn't be made. Should it just be boutique label stuff? Um, I don't know that it that it matters because I don't think I bought any anything really mainstream. So <laughs> it should be your, your favorite your your favorite discs of the first five months of twenty twenty three. Okay. I mean, I'm just gonna say right now, I think this has been a great year for physical media, an expensive year for physical media. Yeah, definitely. But a great year. I mean, there have been a ton of good releases. And 
we should also announce our, our our label of the of the half year so far. Okay. All right. We will see you all next week. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and if for some reason you're watching Aaron Pym instead of us, <laughs> we are way more fun. <laughs> A lot more fun. We got jokes. We got jokes. <laughs> <laughs> We're not so serious. <laughs> Though he does release videos more regularly than we do. He do, he does do that. Yeah. yeah. Alright, we will see you next week. And um, I may or may not have a beard in our next episode. Ooh. Yeah. Alright, thank you. We will see you next week. Hopefully Brian will be here. See ya.